Good morning, guys. Happy Thursday morning. A little stiff, a little sore today. <laughs> yes, Mrs. P and I managed to get all those plants planted yesterday. Turned out to be 286 peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers, and pickles. There's a lot of digging. <laughs> God, <laughs> we got it done. So, all right. And they are still digging along on the pond, chipping up trees and everything. So, We'll see what happens today with that. But what I want to discuss is things are starting to get a little interesting uh, around the world. And it behooves us to pay attention to what's going on. A lot of the news we get from China, Eastern Europe, the United States is fake all right but we still need to pay attention to it because somebody had this idea and you never know if a politician the military whatever says hey that's a good idea let's do that i'm gonna give you this one this came out yesterday it was posted on the uh russian ministry of emergency Sit situations yeah, they have something called that uh, website, all right? They published recommendations in the event of a retaliate in the event of a retaliatory nuclear strike from NATO countries. Now, why would they publish something about a retaliatory strike? Retaliatory means that they did something first, and now somebody's responding. In this article, or in this publication, the date of the attack was called for April 24th. Guys, that's Sunday. Okay, Ironically, that's Orthodox Easter, which I kind of got a kick out of. All right? You know, we all know what Easter is, Resurrection Day, whatever you want to call it. Uh, signifies. So, you know, if this was supposed to be the day of a nuclear attack and a nuclear retaliation, hmm, all right. You know, and so what they had mentioned in this article or in this publication was bringing the basement to a habitable form, stocking up on fuel to the rate of 80 liters per vehicle, Stocking up on drinking water, stocking up on canned food, stocking up on long-term products. Okay, basically prepper stuff. All right. As in, guys, you're going to be stuck in your shelter for a long time. Sunday. Three days from now. Okay. Now, what, where the twist comes in here is... Then all of a sudden, the the publication got pulled down, and the ministry supposedly says that they were hacked. Now, I'm going to take that with a grain of salt, because that's probably there, there's many reasons why I question this. That's an interesting hack to have, okay to put in the detail that they put in on what to stock up on and things like that. All right. But maybe. Okay. But the bigger question then comes to this. <clears throat> Who was the hacker? That we don't know. Why would you hack something like the Ministry of Emergency Situations to panic the Russian population? Who did that? Where are most hackers? China, the United States, and Russia. Well, I have a tendency to doubt that it would be the Russians hacking their own situation to scare their people. China has basically come out, and I'll touch on this in a minute, left and right about increasing their relationship with Russia. So that only leaves one potential 
place where there's a good amount of hackers. <clears throat> now I know you could say anonymous or something like that, but what does anonymous get out of you know they believe it or not actually have rules that they follow to what they you know th there's a, there's an actual mission for anonymous the same it okay so is this the United States putting something in this? to cause panic within Russia. That's very possible. You know, that's the one thing that didn't come up is who the hackers were. And again, if it's a hack. Because here's what comes up next, if you saw this or not. No sooner do does this does this uh, publication go up on the ministry's website. Russia announces that they have tested the largest, most powerful ICBM ever, okay, uh, the Sarmat missile, which replaces the Satan missile, okay. Now, while our Pentagon has been all worried about LGBTQ tea parties and ice cream socials for the transgender community, uh, you know, and kicking trained soldiers out of the military because they don't believe in <clears throat> putting stuff on their body. The Russians have been building up their military. Okay? And so now have come out with this ICBM. To give you an idea how big this thing is, okay, the weight of one of these missiles is more than 200 tons Supposedly, it has the distance and the capability, I mean, obviously, uh, liquid rocket fuel, to hit a target anywhere on the place, face of the Earth. That's, I mean, think about this. Let's talk about, gee, we could take something from Moscow and hit the southern tip of Chile. You know, it's a long... Have you ever been on a plane, Okay going anywhere. And this is one trip I took. New York City to Johannesburg, South Africa is a 24-hour plane trip to give you that idea, to go from New York City to the southern tip of Africa. Imagine the distance that a missile can cover. A hell of a lot faster than a plane, too. Okay, So, at the same time that the that supposedly a hack happened to talk about a retaliatory, retaliatory, that's a tough word for me to say this morning, uh, retaliatory strike on Russia comes through. Russia tests an ICBM that has nuclear capabilities. I want you to think about that part. Then you get even a little deeper onto what's going on here. We have the first phone call between the Chinese defense minister, Wei Feng, and our defense secretary, Lloyd Austin. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Discussing China's territory. Now, Wei told Austin yesterday, or I'm sorry, on Wednesday, that no one was going to change Taiwan's status as part of China. Remember, China has this one China policy. They Hong Kong is theirs, Taiwan is theirs, whatever it would be. Quote, if the Taiwan issue is not handled properly, it will have damaging impact on Chinese-U.S. relations. Then you also talk about Chinese-Russian relations, where the Chinese are ramping up their relations with Russia. And what's going on? ICBMs getting tested, et cetera, et cetera. And they're starting to threaten the U.S. Don't you do anything. You can start to see what's going on in the world pretty quick, okay? That, you know, there is a very strong possibility for the attempt of a large takeover, a new world order, just not the one Hillary Clinton wants, trying to take over the world. You know, again, you can go back to World War II and go, gee, Hitler and Hirohito, or, you know, 
you got to have those strategic alliances. You know, the Axis powers from World War II were a European and an Asian country. What do we have here? A European and an Asian country. Yes, I know Russia covers both Europe and Asia. Don't you can say they're both. Keep your head on a swivel, guys, because the information that's coming out, if you think a little bit further than what's actually reported, like I said, who was the supposed hacker? That doesn't come out. Then you start to get a little bit better idea of what's really going on. Pay attention. Keep doing what you're doing. Who knows what happens? Have a good one. Pimple out.